In this part of the June 2020 Camp Connection, we will look into a hot topic in Europe, the SKIP database. SKIP is the database for information of substances of concern in articles as such or in complex objects, established under the Waste Framework Directive. For the latest news on this, we will connect with Kevin Pollard of ECA in Helsinki. Hello Kevin, can you tell us more about the SKIP database developments? Hi, cheered. Yeah, so basically the SKIP database aims to ensure that the information on articles uh, containing candidate list substances, or in other words, SVHC, is available throughout the whole life cycle of products, including and in particular at the waste stage. Um, it has a number of objectives, uh, including to reduce the presence of severely hazardous substances in waste, uh, to encourage substitution of those substances with safer alternatives, uh, and to contribute to a better and stronger circular economy by helping waste operators ensure that such substances are not present in recycled materials. Um, the database also will have an important function to help consumers make better informed choices when buying products. Many consumers do not want to buy products these days containing SVHC, uh, and the database can help uh, with the consumer choice in this arena. Who needs to submit the information and when? Okay, I'll, I'll start with the when. Uh, the legal text requires that notification is done from the 5th of January 2021. In practice, we plan to open the submission system uh, considerably before that, around late October. So that will give also um, industry the opportunity to submit earlier if they're prepared to do so. Um, the main duty holders are importers of articles uh, from outside the EU and European manufacturers of articles, uh, but of course also assemblers and distributors who are part of the supply chain also have obligations. However, in many contexts, assemblers or distributors will be able to make use of some simplified notification uh, mechanisms that we have been able to identify. Um, the key message is that it's about articles containing substances uh, from the candidate list above 0.1% weight per weight. And it's maybe also uh, useful to mention that this is very similar, uh, essentially the same requirements in terms of supply chain communication for articles under reach. So what's different here is that the information not only has to be transmitted in the supply chain, which has been uh, an obligation for quite some time, but also now has to come to a central database to enable the objectives that I just mentioned. Could you remind us again about the 0.1% weight by weight? Should we, for instance, look at a car as a whole or should we look at each component separately? Okay, well, the, the basic principle is that once an article, always an article, but I probably should explain what I mean by that. So in your example, a car is what we would call a complex object. It is made up of many articles, components, subcomponents, and so on. Um, the notification duty is at the article, i.e. single component level, uh, which is necessary because it is not sufficient for a waste operator to know that there is an SVHC somewhere in the car. Um, they need to know in which component of the car an SVHC is located so it can be removed or, or handled separately. Before we know it, it's January 5th, 2021. What should industry do now? Indeed, uh, time flies. Um, the first step, and hopefully many companies have done this already, would be to make an inventory from the supply chain um, on their product portfolio and identify any components that they are either manufacturing or uh, procur procuring and supplying uh, that contain SVHC. Um, and as I mentioned, in principle, companies should have this in place already because of REACH Article 33. But we do know there have been some shortcomings, difficulties and complexities uh, in meeting the obligations of Article 33. So it is fair to say that, that many companies still have a lot to do between now and the deadline. Um, in any case, once the inventory exists, um, the, the companies need to identify any safe use information uh, that's necessary either during the service life of the article uh, or during the waste stage. Um, and once all the data are available on which components contain SVHC and any safe use advice as necessary, um, they can prepare to submit these to ECA. Um, good to mention already that um, in terms of submission to ECA, these can be made manually, one by one, component by component. 
um, or also in groups. So I'll come back to that via a dossier wizard that we're making available. Also, it's um, we're, we've we've made a functionality that we call system to system. So those companies that have more advanced supply chain tracking and who have um, invested in their system that they can track SVHC in their components as part of their normal uh, supply chain, they will be able to make automated submissions to the database on the fly, keep things up to date according to changes in their product portfolio, which is a route that we would highly recommend for companies with uh, large and um, shifting portfolios. Um, this would require some IT investment and adapting uh, the data available to companies within their own supply chain, but of course would normally pay off in the longer term, not only in terms of the company's own tracking systems for SVHC, but also in, in making automated and therefore efficient and up-to-date submissions uh, towards the ECHA database. It's all about knowing the SVHCs in the supply chain. What are the experiences so far? Yeah, well, we've been investing quite much in stakeholder dialogue. We've been um, talking with sector associations, both in terms of manufacturer of articles, uh, different actors during the supply chain. And of course, we've been talking also with waste operators uh, to try and better understand their needs. So this has been a, a major activity for ECA. And from that, of course, we hear we hear certain feedback in, in terms of readiness. Um, good to mention as well, I, 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 I mentioned before that we plan to launch the final database already um, towards the end of October this year. But in fact, ECHA launched a prototype in February um, as a place where companies can familiarize themselves with the prototype database prepared to submit. And around this SKIP prototype, we have implemented an IT user group. Um, with over 60 members from the most important industry sectors. And this is where we work with them, try and find solutions to problems and so on. Um, so in terms of technical aspects of the submission process, uh, some difficulties that we've been hearing about uh, and possible solutions are discussed openly in this group. And as a result of um, our co cooperation with industry within this IT user group, we have been able to identify um, some simplification me mechanisms. So as I mentioned, um, these simplification mechanisms could allow assemblers or distributors to rely on data submitted um, by actors upstream in the supply chain and simply to reference those submissions. And we've also, um, we were also enabling, um, for example, that mother companies could submit data on behalf of a, a group of their companies uh, with certain extra steps. So that's on the simplification. Um, equally, you mentioned earlier the cars, um, and this is a complex topic. So we've been working on approaches, advice, recommendations, how to notify what we call complex products or complex assemblies, like bicycles, like cars. Um, and we're working currently on some advice that can allow companies, first of all, to group notifications for highly similar articles, um, also to make grouping, um, part, excuse me, and also in terms of the, the appropriate amount of layers of reporting uh, from the car through down to the different components where the SVHC are. So as I mentioned, we're based, the simplification is already under implementation and we're working on some advice that can a little bit improve the complexity for complex uh, products. It seems a lot of work, but SKIP will certainly increase supply chain transparency and circular economy. That's correct. We certainly hope so. It may not be perfect in, in the first instance, uh, but we are very confident that this, that this database um, can be a key component and a first step uh, towards the circular economy. As I mentioned, there's currently an important knowledge gap in terms of the presence of severely hazardous chemicals in products, especially for waste operators. Uh, this is quite crucial if we want to increase trust in, in secondary raw materials uh, and come to a, 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 a true circular economy. Uh, and last but not least, the, the SCIP database should also push for substitution of SVHCs uh, by safer alternatives uh, and avoid the need then for special management in the waste stage and avoid the need for consumers to make uh, choices around this. Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's definitely a topic we should not skip, but pay close attention to it.